पूरी दुनिया में इस वक्त भारत के विदेश मंत्री एस जयशंकर छाए हुए हैं उनके तीखे जवाबों का दीवाना आज पूरा भारत है As someone uh, who's had the opportunity to work with Prime Minister Modi for the last eight years, it's a great honor uh, to contribute uh, to this volume. And uh, what I have tried to do in the chapter which uh, I have contributed is to really present my understanding of him in a set of contrasts. So what is India's position? Sitting on the fence is not an option to be a world leader. I, look, I don't think we're sitting on the fence just because I don't agree with you. Uh, doesn't make me sitting on the fence. It means I'm sitting on my ground. You know, somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems. But the world's problems are not Europe's problems. That it's, if it is you, it's yours. If it is me, it's ours. I don't feel, I don't think it's necessary for me to join this axis or not. And if I'm not joining this, I must be with the other one. I don't accept that. Uh, one is a contrast of a deeply nationalistic figure, someone who's almost driven by his uh, desire to take India to a higher level. Uh, and the same nationalistic figure is actually very international, with an enormous curiosity about the world. Look. Uh, you know, we, we have a difficult relationship with China. We're perfectly capable of managing it. It's, uh, if, if uh, I get global uh, understanding and support, obviously it is of help to me. But this idea that I do a transaction, that I come in in one conflict because it will help me in conflict too, that's not how the world works. Uh, so a lot of our problems in China have nothing to do with Ukraine, have nothing to do with Russia. They predate it. Uh, what happens when we go abroad? Uh, that everything he does, uh, what he sees, what he assimilates, what he understands, uh, all the time his mind is working on how do I take this and use it for the betterment of India. I noticed you refer to oil purchases. Uh, if you are looking at energy purchases from Russia, I would suggest that your attention should be focused on Europe, which probably uh, we do buy some uh, uh, energy which is necessary for our energy security. But I suspect looking at the figures, probably uh, our total purchases for the month would be less than what Europe does in an afternoon. So you might want to think about it. Dr. Jayashankar, let me pose this question that he's asked for you actually, he's asked to you. Uh, can India take a stand? You've been a diplomat for this country for so long. Do you think we have it in us to take this kind of a stand? Choose sides. Well, I think we should take a stand and I think we should choose a side and that's our side. Uh, so, uh, and I'll tell you the reason. India first. Uh, oh, absolutely, why not? Uh, I have, of course, uh, got to know him uh, much more closely uh, after he became Prime Minister. I had met him for the first time uh, when he was still Chief Minister. He had come to China. I mentioned my first encounter uh, with him in, in China. Uh, but uh, I've heard so much uh, about his Gujarat days from him. And I see uh, that having an influence on his thinking. Certainly, there are two very obvious examples. Uh, he was a very enthusiastic propagator of solar energy in Gujarat. Today, we see that reflected in the International Solar Alliance Initiative. Uh, he was, of course, he led the earthquake reconstruction, uh, their efforts there. And that we see uh, today in the proposal uh, in the, uh, for the uh, Coalition for Disaster uh, Resilient Infrastructure. So I can, you know, you, you, can, you can actually see how the CM has shaped the PM that, that we have.
When we came back to power this May and did a Kashmir review, there were two choices. One was you had a set of policies which were on the books for 70 years, but for the last 40 years they were visibly not working. And by the way, when I say visibly not working, that meant in the last 30 years, 42,000 people got killed. The fact that the level of intimidation had reached uh, a height where you had senior police officers lynched on the streets of Srinagar, you had journalists who wrote against separatism who were assassinated, you had military, uh, uh, military personnel returning home for Eid who were kidnapped and killed. So, you know, uh, pre-August 5, uh, Please remember this, pre-August 5, Kashmir was in a mess. I mean, the difficulties in Kashmir have not started on August 5. August 5 is supposed to be a way of dealing with those difficulties. So the choices were either you continue what was clearly not working, or you tried something very different. In India, you're, you're, you're moving forward, you're having elections, you got your problems like we do at home, but you've chosen the democratic path. When it comes to Kashmir, I don't know how it ends, but let's make sure that two democracies will end it differently. And if you can prove that concept here, then I think it's probably the best way to sell democracy. Don't worry, Senator, one democracy will settle it. And you know which one. So it's a very challenging neighbor. Now, all of that, you could still handle if they then don't do the one thing which is actually unacceptable in the world today which is to conduct terrorism as in their eyes a legitimate tool of statecraft uh, as a way of pressurizing you to come uh, to the negotiating table now it's not that it's never been done before in history but it's not today acceptable as a as a sort of a, uh, norm of uh, international relations anymore. There's no part in the world, I mean, you have terrorism in different parts of the world, but there's no part of the world where a country uses it consciously, uh, deliberately, as a, as a large-scale industry against its neighbor. So, uh, for me, the issue is not, do you talk to them, don't you talk to them? Of course, I mean, everybody wants to talk to the neighbor. The issue is, how do I talk to a country that is conducting uh, terrorism and which frankly uh, I would say follows a policy of implausible deniability. All of this I, I would say I'm very conscious as someone who's uh, spent most of my life uh, in, in foreign policy uh, domain uh, that it is a domain where beliefs, ideas, concepts are very deeply entrenched. Uh, you know, it is, it, there's, a, there's a very strong orthodoxy uh, uh, about, about foreign policy. And uh, I find it very fascinating about Prime Minister Modi that uh, he had both the ability, the determination, uh, and uh, in some ways the vision to challenge that orthodoxy. Let me uh, put it to you this way, that there's clarity about where we stand. Look, uh, people are entitled to have views about us, but we are also equally entitled to have views about their views and about the interests and the lobbies and the vote banks which threaten. Uh, so, uh, whenever there is a discussion, I can tell you that uh, we will not uh, be reticent uh, about uh, speaking. Does whoever wrote that knows what transshipment means? Well, I mean, transshipment is when you get it. Explain to the rest it. of us. No, when you get it and you sell it to somebody else. I I have not even heard of uh, anybody in India uh, thinking along those lines. So yes, we do buy. So Russia. you're saying the Wall Street Journal report is inaccurate that they're quoting. Uh, uh, politely, yes. Okay. So I can India, say it less politely, is but I'm not I, a, a conduit to any Russian oil transactions. No, not. A, I mean, listen. 
please understand the oil markets there's an enormous shortage of oil there's a physical shortage of oil getting access to oil is difficult i mean a country like india would be crazy to get oil from somebody and send it to somebody else i mean this is nonsense as jay shankar ke bayan is waqt duniya mein charcha ka vishay bane hue hain logo ko videsh mantri as jay shankar ka no nonsense attitude behad pasand aa raha hai yani seedhi baat no bakwas I mean, this is nonsense. I mean, this is nonsense. I mean, this is nonsense. Hey, Jai Jai Shiv Shankar. Hey.